The last unit of this module is about the relationship between knowledge, mind and brain. We have been discussing uh, the characteristics of uh, uh, the human information processing system and the way uh, the, uh, various types of knowledge can be distinguished and uh, how people actually organize their knowledge. But now we, m we try to link that to uh, what we already know about how the brain actually operates and which uh, structures can be distinguished within the brain, human brain. Uh, we start with the neuron and then we, uh, let's say, explore these memory structures and uh, uh, eventually a few words about uh, clinical neurology. Okay, first uh, the human uh, brain and then the, the building blocks of the human brain, the neuron. Um, the neuron is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, as I said, the, 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 the most important uh, and smallest functional unit within the brain. Um, neurons are electrically excitable nerve cells, as, we, as it is uh, stated here, and they transmit information. Um, I think we have an example here, yes. Uh, as you can see, a, a, a neuron has a cell body, uh, the, the, the gray area with the dendrites um, uh, on the left, uh, with a nucleus in it, and uh, there is at least one dendrite, or there is one, let's say, uh, uh, particular structure, the axon, which connects um, this, the, the neuron to another neuron um, through the, um, the axon, uh, the ter axon terminals, basically. As you can see, uh, this axon has uh, uh, sort of, you know, there's a sheath of myelin, a sort of, you know, fat sheath, um, which uh, isolates the action. We are talking about electrical impulses, and um, the impulse does not travel, you know, slowly through the action uh, at a constant rate, but it, uh, in fact, jumps from one, uh, as it is called, node of Ranvier to another. And this jumping, you know, over the the, the yellowish, you know, uh, units here in the exam in in the picture, makes the uh, the, the the rate of transmission of uh, electrical impulses uh, very high. And uh, having this myelin sheath with the nodes of Ranvier makes it possible for the human uh, information processing system to act in a very uh, high at a very high speed. Okay, let's see whether we can, um, uh, uh, yes, we have to go back now. So, um, to see the other uh, information here. Um, as I said, well, the brain has uh, 100 billion neurons, so a lot of neurons, so to speak, and each neuron is connected to up to uh, 100, uh, to uh, 10,000 other neurons. So there are a lot of interconnections, uh, which make the, um, let's say, uh, the uh, human memory system, uh, information processing system, very complex. Uh, so there is a sort of, you know, uh, calculation of the capacity of the human brain, uh, which is something like between one and thousand terabytes. Well, uh, as you, uh, well, that's quite a lot, you can imagine. Um, cognitive development is a matter of growing, you know, of the, of the, the brain, of the human nervous system. Uh, so developing new um, neurons and, and, and structures, but also uh, of pruning. So some of the uh, th that means that some connections are also ended uh, in order to make the particular the human nervous system in particular fit for the purposes uh, it has to serve. And uh, this uh, both uh, uh, growing and pruning of the system makes it a very flexible and a very uh, determined, so to speak, uh, system uh, which uh, people use. Okay, so the neuron again is the center. Uh, yeah, we discussed that already. And then we go into the memory structures. Uh, so these are the larger structures in the human brain um, uh, where all these neurons are, or, are uh, located. Uh, first, we talk about the neocortex. Uh, which is the, the, the let's say the, the upper part of the brain physically, you know, the outer part of the brain, 
uh, if you look at, uh, at uh, you know, the human brain. And then we have the medial temporal lobe, uh, which is part of, these, uh, of the neocortex. And then we have also a look into a, a more a deeper system, the limbic system, with the hippocampus. Uh, first of all, the, the, neo, the neocortex. Now, you, you probably know this picture um, uh, as, as a sort of picture of the human brain in which the neocortex, again, is the outer part of the brain which, is, which with all these kind of uh, giri and sulci, which is a very, you know, um, uh, a very um, uh, a big area um, because of all these windings. Now, we have four lobes here and all these lobes all these uh, sub-areas uh, do have uh, various uh, different functions. The frontal lobe, which is the full part, the parietal lobe, which is something like here, the temporal lobes here, uh, on both sides, and the occipital uh, lobe, which is at the back, and um, uh, which serves all kinds of visual uh, information processing functions. And then the cerebellum, which is here, uh, which is also a very important part of it, which is not a part of the neocortex. Uh, so uh, I've just uh, put some characteristics of these various lobes, some functions in the human information processing system. The frontal lobe is important for conscious thought, for decision making. The parietal lobe uh, is for integrating information from the senses for spatial sense and navigation. And the temporal lobes are for speech, vision, faces, and as a scene, so the complex information processing and long-term memory. And the occipital lobe is for sight, as I already said. So these are very, 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 very uh, gross uh, you know, demarcations, so to speak, of the functions of the human brain, of the neocortex. But you, you have a, a basic idea where uh, things happen, so to speak. Um, and, and the medial temporal lobe has in it, uh, well, has a, an important function as far as the uh, declarative and episodic memory are concerned. So, uh, as I said, so we could also say semantic and episodic memory in our distinction. So, um, these functions are uh, in, in the medial, are uh, located in the medial temporal lobe. And then in the limbic system beneath, uh, we have two important um, organs, the hippocampus, um, which is a very important as a center for transfer from short term to long term memory, as we have discussed, and also the, the amygdala as a memory of emotional reactions and social and sexual behavior. These are quite closely related. Um, 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 and, and, and so when there is some sort of, you know, uh, problem with the hippocampus, uh, let's say uh, a loss of memory, uh, which affects basically your, your uh, uh, recent impressions, um, uh, there, is this, there is a problem which is called, you know, uh, uh, a sort of general amnesia, which sometimes occurs uh, and which has to do with the function of the hippocampus. Then also um, there, is, there are feelings of panic because the emotional functioning uh, situated in the amygdala is also uh, uh, affected. So therefore these two symptoms, loss of memory and panic, go together. Um, okay, so the hippocampus is a basic uh, transfer station uh, and in that sense uh, has a lot of characteristics of what we call short-term memory, but also uh, so uh, functions also in the transfer from short-term to long-term memory. Okay, now uh, a few words about clinical neurology. What do we do with all kinds of knowledge about the functioning of the brain? Um, I'm not going into the details, you know, of the discussion whether uh, human uh, let's say identity can re can really be reduced to this biological substrate, as people like uh, Dick Swap and Victor Lama are um, uh, emphasizing. And that's not part of this introductory course, I think. Uh, but I, it is interesting to to relate um, uh, our knowledge of uh, the human brain to 
uh, pathology and to problems people encounter when various parts of the brain do not function. Uh, I already gave this, this, this example of, uh, of this general amnesia, which sometimes occurs to people. Um, and and uh, an author who has done a lot to describe the connection between human functioning and the brain is Oliver Sacks. Uh, with his, uh, well, he has written a lot of very, very interesting studies. Uh, they all originate from, uh, you know, uh, pathology, people who have problems. And one of the, well, uh, better known examples is the man who mistook his wife for a hat. Uh, and other clinical tales, as it is said, and this was a, a situation in which uh, a particular patient had uh, progressive problems with his uh, right hemisphere and therefore was not able to, let's say, to, uh, to uh, identify complex uh, things which he could not connect anymore. So he could not connect the, the stimuli which together formed the, the image of a particular complex system, like a glow, for instance. Uh, so uh, a thing which with five of these, you know, uh, uh, hand-like, as we call it, uh, forms, uh, he could not easily identify. The man was also uh, uh, a painter. And uh, interestingly, as, 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 as uh, Oliver Sacks describes, his paintings became gradually, gradually more abstract and more abstract, from the uh, figural to more abstract and abstract, which also more or less represented the further deterioration of his right hemisphere. Um, a very interesting uh, story, uh, and also other stories, of course, in, in the numerous books Oliver Sacks has written, and it, it gives an idea of, of, of how, um, let's say, the functioning of the human brain, the human, uh, the, so the biological substrate and the human identity come together. Uh, Sex is also explaining that he, as a, as a neurologist, he is both a doctor and uh, a scientist. And this combination you know, of, of, of let's say, uh, more uh, distant and abstracted, you know, observation and studying of the human uh, brain and the, the personal care and help you offer as a doctor makes his, well, as he explains, his, 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 his job as a clinical neurologist so, so fascinating and so exciting. Well, this is, I think, a good uh, example of the way our knowledge of, uh, the, of the biological substrate and our knowledge of the functioning of the human information processing system can be combined uh, in order to help people and to understand people in both. both. So now we have ended the, the third module on knowledge and memory. Uh, we have discussed uh, the human information processing system. We hopefully understand now how information is being processed. We hopefully can distinguish between declarative and procedural knowledge. Uh, we can understand how people store declarative and procedural knowledge and we can relate the processes of knowledge acquisition to the structure of the human brain.